One day, in a meeting, Albert Einstein was asked if he believed in God. His response really stunned his students. I believe in Spinoza's God. But what did that mean? Who was Spinoza? And how did a 17th century outcast shape one of history's greatest scientific minds? Long before Einstein reshaped physics, Baruch Spinoza sparked a revolution of his own, one that changed how we see God, nature, and our place in the universe. In 1656, his ultra-radical ideas led to his exile from his community. His crime, saying that God wasn't a ruler in the sky, but everything, the trees, the stars, the air we breathe. His books were banned, he was labeled dangerous. Yet today, his ideas influence scientists, philosophers, and anyone searching for meaning. Let's dive into his story. From a brilliant young scholar to a radical thinker who redefined God and the universe. It all began on a summer day in July 1656. Standing before the leaders of his community, almost 23-year-old Spinoza heard the words that would mark him forever. Cursed be he by day and cursed be he by night. His relentless curiosity had led him to ask the questions no one dared to, and for that, he was cast out. Born in Amsterdam in 1632, Spinoza was raised in a community of Jewish refugees from Spain and Portugal. A top student, a sharp mind, heir to a thriving business, his future seemed set, but his hunger for truth led him down a different path. At the time, scientists like Galileo were revealing a universe governed by natural laws, and philosophers like Descartes were questioning everything. Spinoza took it further. What if we've been thinking about God all wrong? His ideas spread like wildfire. Religious leaders saw them as a threat. Friends warned him to stay quiet, but he refused. The price, complete exile, no family, no friends, no support. Most would have broken under that kind of rejection. He didn't. He moved to a tiny room outside town, kept grinding lenses to make a living, and wrote ideas that would shake the world. Imagine a teenage Spinoza, already fluent in six languages, devouring every book he could find. Mornings spent with Hebrew texts, afternoons with Latin and Greek philosophy, nights sneaking glimpses at cutting-edge science. Amsterdam wasn't just any city, it was the beating heart of new ideas, and he absorbed it all. He studied Maimonides, who bridged reason and faith. He read Descartes, who used math to explain reality. And here's the poetic part. The same hands that polished glass lenses crafted some of history's clearest ideas. Just as rough glass is refined into precision optics, Spinoza sharpened raw thoughts into a philosophy that changed how we see the world. Now why were his ideas so revolutionary? While others saw God as a ruler above, Spinoza saw God in every leaf, every star, every breath. God is nature itself, he said, words that flipped religion upside down. In his view, we aren't separate from God. We are God, the way a wave isn't separate from the ocean. It is the ocean expressing itself. People called this dangerous. Centuries later, Einstein called it profound. Spinoza shattered the idea of two separate worlds, physical and spiritual. To him, reality was one, just seen from different angles, like water turning to ice or steam, it's all still water. And if everything follows natural laws, then nothing happens by accident, not even our thoughts and emotions. Now, here's the mind-blowing part, true freedom. It's not doing whatever we want. Spinoza argued that real freedom comes from understanding the natural laws that guide us, like learning to swim. You don't fight the water, you move with it. Ever seen the most dangerous book of the 1600s? Ethics looks more like a geometry textbook than a revolutionary manifesto. Why? Spinoza played a genius move. He hid radical ideas in the most respectable format of his time, mathematical proofs, because who could argue with logic? If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Inside those precise equations were ideas that would change the world. He started with God, proving that God must be nature itself, then built his philosophy step by step, showing how humans can find true freedom and happiness. Religious leaders banned his book immediately, but copies spread secretly across Europe, influencing everyone who read them. These weren't just abstract theories, 
They were radical insights into how to live a good life. By the way, have you ever felt like strong emotions take control of you? Spinoza cracked the code centuries ago. He believed emotions aren't random. They follow laws just like nature. Understanding these laws gives us real power. Take anger. Most people fight it or let it consume them. Spinoza offered a third way. Study it. Where does it come from? What triggers it? Once you understand it, it loses its grip. You stop reacting blindly and start steering your own emotions. Now here's where Spinoza gets really practical. This might just change how you think about happiness. Most of us chase happiness like a prize to be won. But Spinoza argued that true happiness isn't about getting what we want. It's about understanding our place in nature. Instead of fighting what you can't change, work with it. Think about surfers. The best don't try to control the ocean. They learn its patterns and ride the waves. That's what it means to live wisely. Recognize life's patterns, move with them, and find a deeper kind of freedom. But Spinoza didn't stop there. His ideas on freedom led him somewhere unexpected, into connection. We're not isolated individuals floating through life. We're all part of the same reality. Every action ripples outward, and when you really understand this, you stop seeing others as strangers. You start caring about their well-being, not out of duty, but because their happiness is tied to yours. Speaking of reality, want to know how a 17th century philosopher ended up shaping the mind of one of the greatest scientists ever? Let's talk about the fascinating connection between Spinoza and Einstein. Einstein kept a worn copy of Spinoza's books in his library. When reporters asked him about God, he always brought up Spinoza. Why? Because both men saw something extraordinary. The universe runs on precise, beautiful laws that we can actually understand. Remember how Spinoza said God isn't a ruler in the sky, but the entire universe itself? Einstein found deep truth in that. His theory of relativity showed that space, time, and matter aren't separate things. They're part of one cosmic dance. Centuries before physics confirmed it, Spinoza had already seen the universe as a single unified reality. And guess what? Modern science keeps proving him right. Quantum physicists have discovered that tiny particles, light years apart, can instantly affect each other. Sounds bizarre, right? But it's exactly what Spinoza described. Everything in nature is deeply interconnected, and his influence goes beyond science. His ideas on emotions, modern psychology backs them up. Today, therapists help people understand their emotional triggers and patterns, the same insight Spinoza had centuries ago. Understanding brings freedom. Now here's why all this matters today. We live in a world that feels divided and chaotic, but Spinoza offers a different way to see things. Every tree, every animal, every person, we're not separate. We're all expressions of the same universe. And once you really get this, everything changes. How you treat people, how you handle problems, how you live your life. Think about climate change. If we saw nature the way Spinoza did, not as something outside us, but as part of us, would we treat the planet differently? If we truly understood that harming nature means harming ourselves, wouldn't our choices change? Spinoza's life proves something powerful. One person asking deep questions can change the way millions think. A young man who lost everything for his ideas ended up shaping Einstein's mind and influencing generations of thinkers. Tonight, when you look up at the sky, try seeing it through his eyes. Those stars aren't just distant lights. They're part of the same reality you are. The air you breathe, the ground beneath your feet, your own thoughts and emotions, all expressions of one vast interconnected universe. And here's the best part. You can start using these ideas right now. Next time emotions overwhelm you, don't fight them. Understand them. Look for the patterns. Every time you do, you gain more freedom, more clarity. When challenges arise, zoom out. How does this fit into the bigger picture? What can you learn from it? That's what Spinoza did. He turned exile into opportunity, loneliness into wisdom. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Drop a comment below. How does Spinoza's vision of the universe speak to you?